The following is a production of the Department of Broadcasting at Western Illinois University. Heavy rain here in Macomb has caused a lot of household damage. If you've got damaged goods, we've got some good news for you. That heavy rain has subsided, but major flooding has been happening in central Illinois. Scott Beckerman has the full forecast. And OPS is looking for information on a fire that burned down the Western Illinois women's soccer shed. Live at 4 starts right now. Welcome to News 3 Live at 4. News with Adam Yinks and with Jack Pluta. Sports with Nico Hefflinger and weather forecasts from our team of meteorology students at Western Illinois University. News 3 starts right now. Flooding continues across the state of Illinois. Many rivers are cresting and there are still areas where flooding hasn't subsided. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Jack Pluta. And I'm Adam Yanks. The roads and bridges across the region are still submerged after the recent rainfalls. Pictures taken in Peoria show where the Illinois River has submerged the riverfront. This photo was taken by News 3's Nicholas Stewart. And another picture taken by Nick where a river, riverfront park in Havana, Illinois is underwater. The river is expected to go up another seven feet. For updated road conditions and road closures, check our News 3 Facebook page. Residents of Macomb have reached out to Mayor Mike Inman considering the, concerning the flood damaged items due to last week's storm. News 3 Rachel Stibing has what the city is doing to help. Last week, Macomb received unprecedented rainfall, causing nearly 100 or more homes to be damaged by the flood. Last night, the City Council agreed on a deal with Waste Management to pick up these items with no limit to the amount. All that we would ask is that the storm material and the, and the conventional material be presented contained in a bag or a can of less than 33 gallons or less than 50 pounds in weight. The big culprit in this will be carpeting, um, carpeting and carpet padding. And as the contract already calls for, we'd like to see that cut in two foot rolls and rolls that are no longer than an, an approximation of weight of 50 pounds. Items that cannot be cut down, such as furniture and bedding, will also be picked up. That would all be included. If you can get it to the curb, the bulky items don't have to be knocked down to a container size or bag, do we understand that? As long as it can be handled by one person safely and they know how to handle both bedding and bulky items, that's fine, we'll accept that as well. Pickup began yesterday and will continue for two weeks, regardless of the normal spring cleanup scheduled to begin May 13th. This is no time to ask people to hold on to this rain damaged uh, material uh, for two and a half weeks. Uh, expediency really counts here because this could consider, you know, be considered a, a public health hazard in terms of just a health hazard for your household if this is allowed to set around. Residents are also reminded that under Illinois state law, electronics are not eligible for pickup. For News 3, I'm Rachel Stibing. Again, that's all items contained to a 50-pound bag or garbage can and put on the curb for pickup. Today's weather has been nothing out of the ordinary. With chilly winds and wet weather, summer is nowhere to be found. How long will this weather last? Scott Beckerman has our first look on this week's forecast. Scott? Yesterday was a tease with temperatures in the upper 60s and clear skies, but today we're back to the 40s. And with all this rain, it's just adding insult to injury. With all the rampant flood in the state, the Illinois River is continuously rising over its banks. And if we see a decrease in temperature, we could see some snow. For the rest of the day, it's going to be cloudy. Temperature in the 40s, of 100% chance of precip. Winds out of the north at up to 20 miles an hour. Let's take a look at this possible snow overnight. And as this low pressure continues to track off to the east, we have a low front go through the region, dropping these temperatures to near freezing. And we're going to see a shift from rain to snow. A low of 32, a quarter inch of precip, and winds out of the north. Stay tuned for the next 10 minutes for my full weather forecast, and I'll let you in on when we can expect temperatures in the 70s. Back to you, Adam and Jack. All right, thanks, Scott. Macomb continues on repairs to Bower Road and the intersection by East Jackson Street. The repair work will go to fixing things such as storm sewers, new gutters, and new curbs in various areas. Also, some resurfacing work will be done to Bower Road. The work done on these roads is scheduled to last no more than 15 weeks and will be completed by early September of 2013. During this time, the roads involved will have some right lanes constructed to help with the traffic. The cooperation of the public is greatly appreciated as the roads will become more narrow and will have both directions of traffic in one lane. 
The Office of Public Safety is looking for information on a suspicious fire that happened over the weekend. The fire happened in the early morning hours on Friday, April 19th, north of Bro Brophy Hall. The blaze destroyed the equipment shed for the WIU women's soccer team. Clark told The Voice that no electricity was running to the building and with the heavy rainfalls lately, there was little reason for a fire to start. Anyone with information is asked to call the Office of Public Safety or the Macomb Area Crime Stoppers. That number is 309-836-3222. While a stolen piece of artwork is back in the right hands, the painting was stolen on April 12th from the Corbin Olson Dining Hall. WIU's Office of Public Safety followed a tip about the missing piece that led to an arrest. Resident Scott Engels was placed in McDonough County Jail this morning in connection to the theft. He's charged with theft of government property. The Macomb Public Library campaign hosted two fundraisers this weekend to get one step closer to their goal of $800,000. Friends of the Library hosted a book sale and the campaign hosted a live band event. Readers from all over the community gathered at the Friends of the Macomb Public Library's moving sale to add to their collection of books. The district cleared out the library's storage unit and accepted donations to give to the library's campaign for the future. No prices, free will donation, and some people have been very generous. They've given us some big uh, dollars and said, here, this is for the campaign. The library's original structure was built in 1908. Since then, the children's library section has been added on, but it is time for the building to expand once again. The state said you really need a new library, and everybody agrees, so we're all pulling together for that effort. The library will be receiving $2.4 million from the state of Illinois. The only catch? They have to raise nearly $800,000 by themselves before June 30th. I think they feel very confident that we will get there with the remaining fundraisers that we have and people still donating um, money. The campaign has raised nearly three-fourths of their goal of about $800,000. The Friends of the Library plan on playing a role in helping complete this goal. Our next role is the Heritage Day book sale where we have oh, 10 to 20,000 books, all better quality. And after a lot of fundraising, the library is thankful for such a supportive community. Appreciate people's continued support of all the sales because the money goes for things that even if it's not this campaign that we provide a lot of uh, support for the library itself. The books left over from Saturday's sale were donated to a store in Chicago, and the store is giving the books to children in Africa. The Student Government Association has approved the release of $500,000 for a new WIU welcome monument. The plan is to build the monument on Route 67, where Godfather's Pizza used to be. Uh, it's something that's going to look, make the university look good, also help the alumni understand that we're building here at the university and this is something that they can be proud of and also having prospective students look at Western and say, okay, they're, they're, they're doing a lot of good things. The monument is scheduled to be a summer project along with the University Union and Thompson Hall renovations. WIU students, be sure to wear your purple and gold tomorrow. It's Purple and Gold Day at WIU. The celebration began 13 years ago on April 24, 2000. Students, faculty, and staff are encouraged to wear the colors to promote school spirit. WIU celebrated its 100-year anniversary in the year 2000. The Illinois legislator approved the creation of WIU back in 1899. DOMA is still a hot topic in D.C., and WIU is offering another opportunity for students to learn about gay rights activism. The critically acclaimed film Milk will be shown tonight at 7 o'clock in the Fox Room of the Union. The film is based on the life of a gay rights activist and politician, Harvey Milk, the first openly gay person to be elected to public office in California. The film received eight Academy Award nominations and won two Best Actor in a Leading Role and Best Original Screenplay. A group discussion will follow the screening. Last weekend, Macomb hosted EarthFest 2013. It was a beautiful day last Saturday, so I decided to go to Chandler Park myself and celebrate our planet with Macomb residents. While yesterday was officially Earth Day, Macomb celebrated a little early this past weekend in Chandler Park. We only get one Earth, and as citizens of that Earth, we need to make sure we do whatever we can to protect it. Because once that Earth is gone, we don't have a whole lot left to work with. 
Here in Chandler Park in Macomb at EarthFest 2013, the people of Macomb have actually inspired me to make sure I do my part as well. Well, what exactly is EarthFest? EarthFest is a community event to raise money for the Macomb Community Garden to start some youth programs and get the Macomb Community Garden up and running. It's been around for two years, um, but it has a lot of growth that it can do. This is a, run by two main groups. There's the WIU Campus Greens and WIU Rotaract have been instrumental in uh, EarthFest success and um, it wouldn't be what it is today without those two groups. Macomb is behind the curve on the sustainability movement and this highlights the organizations and clubs that are really pushing for the green revolution and come out and join uh, this wonderful day and uh, learn some ways to be more sustainable. Several bands played at the event. Also as a part of Earth Day, several WIU students from the Department of Recreation, Park and Tourism planted trees across the Macomb community. Coming up on Thursday, tune in for our Pet of the Week segment where we feature a dog or cat up for adoption at the McDonough County Animal Shelter. News 3 anchor Jessica Ducey visits each week to bring our community a closer look at local animals that need a home. We'll have that story on Thursday here on Live at 4. Well, everyone may be a little focused on the rain right now, but News 3's Dana Fulton has a fun way to celebrate today's cloudy skies. Thanks, guys. So today is National Talk Like Shakespeare Day, and I'm over here in the Union to see what Western Illinois University students think a Shakespeare accent might sound like. To be or not to be, that is the question. How art thou? Romeo, oh Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? <laughs> hear thee, hear thee. <laughs> It seems like Western students need a little help discovering their Shakespeare accent. Luckily, I have a few tips to help you guys out. When in doubt, add eth to the end of verbs. He runneth, he trippeth, and he falleth. Instead of you, try thou or thee. And instead of y'all, say ye. Instead of cursing, try being a little creative, like calling someone a canker blossom or a poisonous bunch back toad. To add a little weight to your opinions, try starting them with me thinks or wherefore and finally go ahead call all of your friends cousin it's the shakespeare way to do it and hopefully you guys can use those tips to entertain yourself for the rest of the afternoon reporting in the union i'm dana fulton thanks dana coming up we'll tell you how the 19 year old accused of plotting last week's bombing could lead him to the death penalty and why the man accused of sending poison letters to President Obama and other officials was released on bond today. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy, follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. If you could see anything in the world, what would it be? I'd love to see Paris. I'd like to see cupcakes falling from the sky. My daughter, married and happy. I want to see things the way I used to. Chances are, someone you love may one day be affected by macular degeneration or glaucoma. 
Log on to seeabettertomorrow.org or call 1-800-437-2423 to learn about glaucoma and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-437-2423 or log on to seeabettertomorrow.org. I just want to see more of the things I love. After a deadly attack last week, the case against the Boston bombing suspect is moving forward. The 19-year-old Massachusetts man accused of plotting last week's bombing is facing federal charges that could lead to the death penalty. According to the Boston Globe, the marathon bombing suspect admitted that he and his brother detonated the bombing and were responsible for the murder of MIT officer Sean Collier. Funeral services are being held today for Sean Collier, the MIT officer killed in the line of duty. Police believe the 24-year-old was gunned down by the Boston Marathon bombing suspects. Friends and family gathered at St. Patrick's Church in Stoneham. Vice President Joe Biden will attend a public memorial service tomorrow at the MIT campus. The suspect that was arrested in the Reich and tainted letters to President Obama and other public officials has been released on bond today. Investigators say they did not find any evidence in Riken and Paul Kevin Curtis's home or car. He was arrested and formally charged with last week, last week, but pleaded not guilty. Curtis was arrested at his home in Corinth, Massachusetts, one day after sending a letter with Riken to Senator Roger Wicker. Another letter was also sent to Sadie Hollins, a justice of the peace. Well, is today's rainy weather here to stay? I don't know. Scott Beckerman will have the answer and the full weather forecast after the break. Hi, I'm Polly Perez. On NCIS, I play a forensic scientist. I've noticed that young people, girls in particular, don't have a lot of role models for careers in science, engineering, and technology. Here's the real problem. Not enough students are going into these fields anymore. So where does the next generation of scientists, engineers, and technologists come from? Here's the truth of the matter. In the coming years, engineering and technology are where the jobs are going to be. But if our young people don't see the excitement in these careers, they won't pursue them, and they'll be the ones who will lose out. I mean, think about the main character in the movie Iron Man, an engineer, not only the character, but how about the role engineering and technology play in helping to bring a movie's creative vision to the screen? The reality is this. Engineers are creative problem solvers. They come up with the ideas that are solutions to the everyday needs of you and me. They help shape our future, and they're essential to our health, our safety, and our happiness. As they say in our industry, ready on the set and action. In this case, set means science, engineering, and technology, and being ready makes all the difference for our future. We need your ideas. We're counting on everyone working together to fix this. Parents and teachers, let's inspire our young people. Engineers, be mentors to kids in your community. Share your story and the love of your field. Media, show kids how exciting these fields can be by spotlighting great accomplishments by engineers, scientists, and technologists. Kids, seek your dreams, study hard, follow your imagination, and pursue careers in science, engineering, and technology. Learn more about how you can help by going to EIConline.org slash ready on the set and make your commitment. Every one of us has a role to play in making our communities and our country stronger. Discover yours. Go to serve.gov and find the opportunity that works for you. And this message is brought to you by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the surface features over our area it appears that Mother Nature must be angry with, with Illinois, as much of the state is dominated with some unneeded rain. We've got a low pressure system centered in northeast Illinois and a cold front sweeping over the area. Now this cold front is going to sweep at about 5, 530 this evening, and there are two ways to locate uh, a cold front. The first way is a sharp contrast in temperatures, as we've got 30s behind the front and 40s out ahead of the front. And the second way is a sharp change in wind direction. We've got northerly winds behind the front and southeasterly winds out ahead of the front. Take a look at our current radar with all this unfortunate rain through the area. As this rain continues to track off to the east, some rain's going to wrap around at the same time this front passes, dropping those temperatures and making a shift from rain to snow. We can see them, some of these flurries at about midnight tonight. Tomorrow it's going to be mostly sunny, high in the 50s, low of 37, and winds out of the west. 
For the Almanac, the high of 42, lots colder than the norm of 56 for this time of year, and half of the record of 84 set back in 1960. The low of 32, much colder than the norm for April of 45, and, and a little bit warmer than the coldest record of 24 set back in 1910. The sunrise at 6, sunset at about 8, or about 13 hours of daylight. For regional temps, it's 46 in Des Moines, 42 in Kirksville, 50 in Columbia, 56 in Springfield, and a chilly 56 up near the lake in Chicago. Take a look at our weekly outlook. It's going to start off in the 50s and the sun's going to come out tomorrow. Thursday, high of 58 with the sun, low of 39. And we're up to the 60s by Friday with a 30% chance of rain. Saturday, high of 68, mostly cloudy. And we're up to the 70s on Sunday, mostly sunny, high of 72, low of 53. All right, thanks for that, Scott. And Nico, how about you cheer us up with some sports? Oh, gotta love it. Bob Nielsen era has officially begun for Leatherneck football. I'll have the story up next on sports. Are these real? The best quality. You mean they're fake? Only a few dollars. few dollars. Only a few dollars. Only a few dollars. Only a few dollars. It's not only a few dollars. Counterfeit goods take away jobs, and many are tied to violence and crimes including child labor, drugs, and gangs. You have the power to stop it. Know the real cost. Don't buy counterfeits. Your heart rate's a little fast. Cause of death, acute myocardial infarction. Have you tried a weight loss program? Likely caused by type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Still smoking? Victim's lungs are black and scarred. You can get a physical exam now. Or you can get one later. Talk to your doctor about a physical. Learn how to lower your risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease and live a healthier life. People have good hearts. During times of disaster, they donate food, clothing, and other necessities. However, this leads to the cost of packing, transportation, and storage, which is why money is more effective. Give with your heart. Cash is best. For more information, visit www.cidi.org. Friday night concluded the first spring practice under new head coach Bob Nielsen. The Leathernecks worked out 60 plays for about 90 minutes in front of almost 1,000 Leatherneck fans. Several top performers in the spring game were quarterbacks Javon Williams and Hayden Northern. On the defensive side, Ryan Deming recovered a fumble and blocked a field goal. Western opens the 2013 season on August 29th at home against Hampton. After losing by 17 points in game one of the series, the Bulls regrouped with a, and came back strong with a good effort in game two of the opening round series against the Nets. Jumping into the highlights, fans arriving at the Barclays Center for game two. And the Bulls got off to a good start. Third quarter now, Nazir Mohammed is going to find Carlos Boozer under the basket. He got the and one in the fourth. Marco Bellinelli going to get the steal, pushes it down the court, finds the trailing uh, Nate Robinson with the up and under layup and now Derrick Rose looking sharp on the suit. He's loving it. Nets trying to mount a comeback. Darren Williams coming down the court. Hits Joe Johnson who's going to hit the three at the top of the key. Johnson had 17 points. Final minutes of the game. Kirk Heinrich going to lose the handle but Joakim Noah is going to get it and he's going to get this layup. Noah had a double-double in limited time and the Bulls go on to win 90-82. to the Bulls had three players pick up double-doubles as Boozer, Dang, and Noah all had big games. With the series now even at one, the teams will head to Chicago for a pair of games at the United Center. Game three is Thursday night with tip-off scheduled for 7.30. 
After being swept by the Brewers, the Cubs continued their road trip in Cincinnati with another Central Division series against the Reds. Jumping into the highlights, Cubs went up 2-0. Having a little tech, there we go, 2 nothing. but Car Starlin Castro going to make a nice diving catch here. Rob Chris Heisey of the hard liner to short. Uh, Jack Hanahan now crushes this ball to the wall just out of the reach of Nate Scherholz. The RBI triple is going to tie this game up at two, but this one would go on for quite some time. As we go all the way to the 13th inning, Luis Valbuena buzzing. He crushes this home run to right field. That is going to put the Cubs ahead four to two. Bottom half of the inning. And Jay Bruce is going to tie this game up with a double. We're all tied up at four. As there's Bruce out there at second. Two batters later, former Cubs Cesar Is Torres picks up the walk-off single, and the Cubs lose five to four. Cubs will look to snap their four-game losing streak tonight in game two with the Reds. On the hill will be Carlos Villanueva once again busting out the stash for the Cubbies. And Tony Singrani for the Reds. First pitch is at 6-10. With just four games remaining in the regular season, the Blackhawks are just a win away from winning the President's Cup. They look to pick up that win against the Vancouver Canucks last night. We roll into the highlights. First period, Canucks on the power play. And Jason Garrison going to find Yannick Hansen, who scores on the one-timer. Second period, Daniel Sedin once again working on the boards. He's going to find Zach Cassian wide open in front of the net. 2-0 Canucks now. Later in the second. This time Sedin's going to get a breakaway. Coming down the ice, he goes forehand, backhand through the five hole of Corey Crawford. That's all the Vancouver Canucks needed as they go on to win 3-1. The Hawks have lost back-to-back -back games for just the third time this season. They'll look to finish the season strong. They take on Edmonton on Wednesday. Puck drop is scheduled for 8-30. No, rough game for the Blackhawks, but going to be looking to bounce strong, hopefully win that President's Cup before heading into the playoffs. Thank you, Nico. Thanks, Jack. Playoff hockey, it's going to be a good one. Oh, I, nothing better. After the break, we'll show you some new tricks from man's best friend. I thought indoor tanning was safe. They said their tanning rays were less likely to cause a sunburn. What you need to know is UV light from indoor tanning can cause premature aging, including wrinkles, sagging, and age spots. So instead of making you look cool, it can make you look old. And even worse, UV light can increase your risk of skin cancer, including melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer, especially when exposed at an early age. And treatment can be surgery, and sometimes even chemotherapy and radiation. In fact, current estimates are that one in five Americans develop skin cancer. And one person dies from melanoma about every hour. I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to be one of them. This message brought to you by the American Academy of Dermatology. I'm telling you, indoor tanning is not as safe as you think. In fact, Indoor tanning is totally out. Travel advisories to small business loans. Retirement savings to Medicare coverage. ID theft protection to contacting elected officials. Student loans to taxes online. Whether you have information to get or ideas to give, USA.gov is the official place to connect with your government. From surplus car auctions to finding a new job, our new mobile apps will keep you updated on the go. So from marriage records to passport applications, veterans benefits to birth certificates, patent applications to energy saving ideas, product recalls to home buying tips. Check out USA.gov because the country runs better when we stay connected. Well, Sunday night's playoff game between the Rockets and Thunder featured a halftime performance for the ages. These K-9s can do it all. They can dance together. Look at that. How cute is that? Look at the dog.
Well, hey, that's all the time that we have here today. For Nico Hefflinger, I'm Jack Cluda. And for Scott Beckerman, I'm Adam Yingst. Have a great night, everybody.